brothers. In the procession, when Jacob set the people, he set the maids and their children first, and then he had Leah with her children, and then he had Rachel with her children. The firstborn of Leah was Reuben. The firstborn of Rachel was Yosef. When Reuben sinned, he didn't pass the birthright to the second son of Leah. The birthright passed to the first son of Rachel. Okay? And then through Yosef, and remember part of that firstborn birthright is a double portion. The two portions went to his two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. And again in Genesis 49, Jacob adopted... <clears throat> Jacob adopted Ephraim and Manasseh as part of his family. He said, like Simeon and Reuben, these two shall be to me, referring to the first two born. And then he set Ephraim above Manasseh when he crossed his hand and put the blessing upon him. And then he told Joseph, that all the other children you have shall be called by these two, Ephraim and Manasseh. But the birthright belonged to Joseph and passed to Ephraim. And there's another place or two in Scripture where he says, Ephraim is my firstborn. And out of Ephraim, Manasseh, Yosef, then, shall come the one who shall be one. The teacher, the leader, so forth. Anyway. <clears throat> in, in, in verse 22 there. It happened when Israel dwelt in that land that Reuben went and lay with Bilai, his father's concubine, and Israel heard. Now the sons of Yaakov were twelve.
if an
everything. And yet they
theme with will not again destroy Shall not come with terror. They shall with the same.
Certainly. You don't have to. But sometimes we do. But in verse 9 he says, But I need Yahweh, Eloheka, ever since the land of Egypt, I will again make you dwell in tents, as in the days of the appointed feast, the appointed, the Moed, the appointed time. Most people don't have any idea what a lot of these things are talking about because they don't celebrate the festivals of Yahweh and have no idea what they mean or what they represent. Most people don't have any idea that the festivals that Yahweh gave in Leviticus chapter 23 are the appointed times of His coming back and forth to the earth. And they speak of what He's going to do in the form of Yehoshua. But if you don't celebrate the feast, you don't know these things. The festivals are also called the testimony of Yehoshua. In the book of Revelation, it talks about here are those who what? Keep the commandments and have the testimony of Yehoshua. That's knowing the festivals. Most people don't know because they never celebrate them. Verse 10, I have also spoken by the prophets and have multiplied visions. I have given symbols or parables through the witness of the prophets. Is he telling us that I've given you witnesses, I've given you symbols, I've given you signs, I've given you all these things. Then he says, though Gilead has idols, surely they are vanity. Though they sacrifice bulls in Gilgal, indeed their altars shall be heaps in the furrows of the field. Normally it's supposed to stop there, but Yaakov fled to the country of Syria. Israel served for a spouse or a wife. And for a wife, he tended sheep. Verse 13, by a prophet, Yahweh brought Israel out of Egypt, and by a prophet, he was preserved. Who was a prophet that brought him out of Egypt? Moshe. Ephraim provoked him to anger most bitterly. Therefore his Adon will leave on him his blood guilt and return his reproach, his reproach upon him. We're going to
all of those countries that come together in a coalition thinking they're going to come against Israel are really what? Plotting against one another. Mm -hmm. How can they trust one another? But yet they, they do, you know? Those who eat your bread shall lay a trap for you. No one is aware of it. Will I not in that day, says Yahweh, even destroy the wise from Edom and understanding from the mountains of Esau? Then your mighty men, O Timon, shall be dismayed to the end that everyone from the mountains of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. For your violence against your brother Yaakov. Mm. Yaakov was the chosen of Yahweh from the very beginning. Those who bless you, he says, I will bless. Those who come against him, he said, he will what? Those who curse you, I will curse. Those who lightly esteem you, I will bitterly curse. Even though we read that passage in, in, the, in the English text and it's the word curse both times in English, it's two different Hebrew words. And one is saying, those who lightly esteem you, I will bitterly curse. Mm -hmm. Talk about the descendants of Abraham. You think it ought to change how people think about the ones they call the Jews? You know that word they speak with, with you know. Disgusting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know them Jews, you know. <laughs> <laughs> For your violence against your brother Yaakov, shame shall cover you and you shall be cut off forever. That's a long, a long, it's a long time. In the day that you stood on the other side, in the day that strangers carried captives his forces, when foreigners entered his gates and cast lots for Jerusalem, even you were as one of them. But you should not have gazed on the day of your brother in the day of his captivity, nor should you have rejoiced over the sons of Judah in the day of their destruction, nor should you have spoken proudly in the day of distress. You know, Tom, think about it. That means we ought to be very, very careful what comes out of our mouth about or against anybody because we might not really know who they are. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of, the, one of the hardest things to take back is words that you said. You can't. Right? You can't? You mean you can't take them back? You mean they already said they're gone? Yeah. You can't even chase them down and bring them back? <laughs> it's very important what we say, isn't it? You should not have entered the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Indeed, you should not have gazed on their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. You should not have stood at the crossroads to cut off those among them who escaped, nor should you have delivered them up, those among them who remained in the day of distress, or delivered up to the enemy in the Hebrew. For the day of Yahweh upon all the nations is near. As you have done, it shall be done to you. Your reprisal shall return upon your own head. If we believe that Yahweh is true, if he's speaking to the prophet, are these words true? Does he mean what he said? Do you think we ought to put any importance on these things? I know a lot of people say, oh, yeah, man, they're important. I ain't read it, but I know it's important. Can you imagine somebody would think it's important don't even know what it says? Verse 16, For as you drank on my holy mountain, so shall all the nations drink continually. Yes, they shall drink and swallow, and they shall be as though they had never been. In Revelation, he talks about this harlot. And talk about this harlot, the cup that she poured for all the rest of them. He's going to make her drink of her own cup. Right? When Moses came down from Mount Horeb, and he broke the tablets, remember? Remember? because they had been doing all kinds of bad stuff. He ground these things up, and he mixed the water of the brook with them, right? <clears throat> if you grind up gold, which was their sin, and mix it in with water, what do you get today? It's called colloidal gold. Anybody ever seen any? Colloidal gold is blood red. He made them drink. They took the gold, which was that calf that they made. He ground it up, mixed it in water, made them drink of their own sin. In Revelation, he says, you're going to drink of the cup that you poured out. We need to think back of all the things that we ever done that's considered sin that we're going to have to partake of. Because remember, the word for sin also includes a punishment. In the Torah, Yahweh says, I set before you this day life and blessing, death and curse that you choose. Your obedience to the word brings blessings. The blessings are inherent in the act of obedience. 
Your disobedience brings the curses. The curses are inherent in the disobedience. Yahweh's not sitting up there waiting for somebody to do right or wrong and then throw them a candy bar or a switch. He doesn't have to. He's already spoken the word. The word will bring itself to pass in our life. In the book of Hebrews in chapter 1, it records, refers to the first two verses, the word of His power. The word has the power to bring itself to pass. <clears throat> Again in verse 15, For the day of Yahweh upon all the nations is near. As you have done, it shall be done to you. Your reprisal or reward shall return upon your own head. For as you drank on my holy mountain, so shall all the nations drink continually. Yes, they shall drink and swallow, and they shall be as though they had never been. But on Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. And there shall be holiness. Remember the word holy means to be set apart for Yahweh's use. The house of Yaakov shall possess their possessions. The house of Yaakov shall be a fire. The house of Yosef a flame. But the house of Esau, stubble. What is stubble? That's what burns so fast. Mm -hmm. Anybody ever seen a grass fire? When the fire gets to that dead grass, that stubble, what does it do? Pew, it just almost explodes as it goes through. The house of Esau stubble. They shall kindle them and devour them, and no survival shall remain of the house of Esau, for Yahweh has spoken. You think he cares about what people do to his chosen? You think he cares about what people say about Yaakov and calling him a supplanter, deceiver, and all that kind of stuff when he is really Yahweh's chosen from the very beginning? Verse 19, the inhabitants of the south. That word south there is a Hebrew word negev. Negev is a desert down south of Jerusalem going down toward Beersheba. The inhabitants of the Negev shall possess the mountains of Esau, the inhabitants of the Philistine lowland. They shall possess the fields of Ephraim, the fields of Samaria. Benjamin shall possess Gilead. Gilead is that area on the east side of, of the Sea of Galilee we call today the Golden Heights up in there. The captives of this host of the sons of Israel shall possess the land of the Canaanites as far as Zarephath. John was telling me today the name, the word Zarephath means what? France. The captives of Jerusalem who are in Shepharad. Shepharad is the Hebrew word for Spain. Shall possess the cities of the south. You think that his land is going to cover an awful lot of land, an awful lot of area? <laughs> then deliverers, in our English Bibles we got the word saviors, but actually it's the word deliverers shall come to Mount Zion. To judge the mountains of Esau, the kingdom shall be Yahweh's. Are we looking towards that day? Is that day fast approaching? There's a lot of people who would stand up and say, Oh, man, I hope the day, the day of Yahweh just come right now. Bring on the day of the Lord. And he's asking the question, Are you really ready for that day? Are you ready for that day? If you're not, how do you get ready? Remember the scripture tells us that Yahweh is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to what? The knowledge of repentance. What does repentance really mean? Stop breaking the law, confess that you did, and turn back in obedience to Yahweh's word and start walking in obedience to what that word tells you to do. It's really simple. And as hard as that. It's hard for people to turn away from living in the world to obey Yahweh. Because the things of Yahweh and the things of the world are in direct opposition. Mm -hmm. But who is the God of this world? Scripture says, Hasatan. We want to follow Hasatan, the adversary against Yahweh's word. I thank you for your time and your patience. That concludes the teachings for this day, and I just barely made it. Ah. <laughs> 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 Where